Hi, this is Debbie. Welcome back to Cheyenne Life. We're out here outside of the old Victorian house and looking at right now, which doesn't look like it, the black lilies. The black lilies have finally bloomed and they are not black. They are just really, really dark red. And I don't think the camera is going to give them justice because I think it shows up lighter than what it really is. They are a lot darker than they're showing up right now on camera. And a couple of them have gotten so heavy with blooms that they fell over. <laughs> so they're just kind of laying down. We're going to have to tie them up today because they've got a couple more blooms to happen. And the blooms are just really, really big in comparison with the stalks. So they just kind of laid down. We've also got a zucchini out here, which was supposed to be a jack-o'-lantern. But look at there, we already have a zucchini on it. It turns out it was a zucchini plant. Plenty of other blooms on it and uh, getting some more stuff on it. I'm not sure if this one will have anything. It's a lot smaller plant. Again, this is on the north side of the house so it doesn't get very good sun exposure. And of course, it's a little bit cooler all during the day. Although right now, I'm not sure how it could be because we're in the 90s every day. Uh, yesterday when we got into our Jeep um, we had an appointment at the eye doctor it was 108 degrees inside of the Jeep of course that's inside the Jeep um, but it didn't cool off when we took off down the road even with air conditioning on so it makes me suspect that we were at that temperature for some reason it's just not recording it I guess on the weather stations but this is also the strawberries let me see if I can Peel back the top a little bit so you can see them a little bit better there we go and we have lots of blooming going on right now so it looks like we're gonna have some more strawberries on it these are of course the buried treasure and the quinault and a few others in here and they have set runners and we just kept we um, just turning them back into the kiddie pool and they are taking root and some of these are um, already taken root and given so many leaves and I'm not sure which ones are the runners and which ones are the actual older plants so strawberries taking off looking quite nice now and we do have that new puppy she's out here running around right now as you can see she's actually playing with them now this is the puppy that we picked up in South Dakota there she is running around and playing <laughs> antics of puppies but anyway her name is Kira Fizgig that's what my daughter named her and she picked her up from the breeder yes we did use a breeder a professional breeder she is AKC so she is all papered and all of that stuff anyway get back into the garden tour these are the butternut squash that I had planted along the edges out here that are kind of shaded and uh, Samantha, I think she fell on the curb. Make sure she's okay. Um, so anyway, these are the butternut squash. They're starting to fill out now and uh, getting some runners on them. They were getting runners, but now they're just getting a little bit bigger. So I'm hoping they do catch up with the others. It doesn't take them very long once they get started. And here she is again. That's Kiera. Isn't she beautiful? She's red haired. So now we have a red-haired poodle, a chocolate poodle, a apricot poodle, which is now white because she's 11 years old, and a black poodle. Now all toy poodles. We enjoy that breed. And we still have not gotten the uh, blackberries, raspberries, and blueberries in and planted, but they still look great. They're just sitting here waiting to get in the ground. Why are you talking to me? <laughs> because I have to have help to get them in, Samantha. Anyway, this is the rhubarb we've got going on. Um, the smaller of the rhubarb plants is now catching up um, a lot more. Definitely catching up. And I think we're almost big enough now with the larger one to start harvesting some stalks here so I can make a strawberry rhubarb pie or something. And jack-o'-lanterns are looking beautiful. In fact, I'm not sure I'm going to be able to get in the walkway. <laughs> it's almost across the walkway at this point. And uh, so far I've only had two that did not pollinate and had to pull off and throw away. But 
you know, when you've got a jack-o'-lantern, if you want to have a, a big pumpkin on your vines, you want to pull off all the other pumpkins anyway. So we already have one on the vine and I want it to get pretty large. It's pretty large already. I'm looking at about basketball sized in there. And now that it's daylight, this is actually early in the morning. You can kind of see it down in there. There we go. And yes, we have blooms as big as basketballs on this, on this one in particular. The stalk on this one is pretty robust. I don't know if you can see it back in there. Let me see if I can get a good shot of it. Not really. So anyway, these, uh, I can show you like the size of the, the leaves are three, four times the size of my hand. So this plant is very, very healthy. Um, we don't have much of a nitrogen split on it, but you could tell from the leaves. We do have a little bit, um, a little bit of excessive nitrogen though, because you can see kind of that greasy look in the center section of the leaves. That just means we've got a lot of nitrogen going on in here. So that made me back off on fertilizing these anymore, which we use only organic anyway. And I usually don't use fertilizers, but this season I did since we amended all of the soil and everything. So what I use in here is blood mill, bone mill, which I don't put in it very much bone mill in where the um, pumpkins are, and uh, an organic Job's three month release fertilizer. And here is the kohlrabi, which is still just working on filling out and getting some bulbs on it. Um, it's only been thin now a couple of weeks, so it's just trying to catch up and get some bulbs on the actual kohlrabi. And this is the kale. The kale has just really ballooned out since thinning it. In fact, I'm probably going to have to thin it again. Just a beautiful patch of kale. And I always plant my kale in patches. I know that a lot of people like to separate the um, individual plants out so you get uh, bigger plants. But you still get some really big leaves on these if you put them in a patch. I mean, you can see in comparison with my dog walking around, the leaves are huge. Um, the Replanted mustard is just doing great, and as well as the turnips. Um, still need to thin the turnips out, but I'm still kind of waiting until they get just a little bit bigger because they're kind of spindly right now. And the mint, of course, is still doing wonderfully. Um, I have a lot of issues with the chocolate mint. As you can see, it's down in there. The chocolate mint's the darker one. And I have a lot of issues with it kind of wilting during the day. But I did water it this morning and it'll probably, it perks back up once it's been watered and then towards the end of the day it kind of wilts back again, but then it always comes right back. Um, but I didn't get a chance to get out here and kind of, I kind of do a little sprinkling during the night now because it's just so, so hot and so dry. So I've been doing that during the night and I got, I didn't have a chance last night. Time got away from me with the new puppy and everything, so I missed that probably shouldn't have and I hope that the plants all right but usually it is now we're looking at the other side and we are back looking at the broccoli I've got some really nice large heads on the broccoli um, we did eat one so we have some nice big heads on the broccoli and I, we did eat one the other night and uh, especially this head I have not pulled it off yet it's not quite ready but it is just really big as you can see here we've got a two two hands at least nice big size and this one is still very 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 young so still coming on um, but beautiful and this is the one that i did cut off and if you leave it you'll have some little spears that will come out of this but i th actually think that there won't be on this one because i did cut uh, the entire head and some of the offshoots with it some of the offshoots had already gotten ready as long um, as with the head so I wish I went ahead and cut that and I don't think we're gonna have any more offshoot um, pieces so I'm just gonna go ahead and pull this and this one out of here um, right after the video because I don't want any cabbage worms getting on it um, and then spreading to the other plants and this is the rutabaga behind it and um, getting some really large rutabaga plants back here especially one right down here um, and they are starting to bulb up 
and those cabbages remember how little those were a couple of weeks ago when I got everything thinned out and got them separated and now look how big they are now so really catching up and then I did have in that same spot where I had the broccoli that struggled in the season if you've been watching the videos I did have that one cabbage die back so there is definitely something in that soil no I'm not sure if there's too much copper or someone has poured something on there way back in the past before we moved here or what exactly was going on but had some issues with that radishes are coming on um, we do have we did have a pretty good harvest of radishes finally um, a couple of weeks ago and I had replanted where it was spotty and now those radishes are getting up and ready we've got some heads on those down in there and then we've got the cherry giants and the um, oh gosh German giant Crim no crimson giant sorry that are coming on as well um, those are the smaller of the plants um, of the radishes and we did pull a nice couple of carrots out of here they were very large carrots We've got some more in here, but we also have some young ones that are coming on. Um, I'm not sh sure if they'll be completely ready um, at the end of fall, whatever you consider fall here in Cheyenne, Wyoming, which is very, very short. Um, so I'm not sure if they will be caught up to then, but if they don't, they will overwinter and we will see them again in the spring. Um, and I'm going to be changing a couple of the things in this area. Um, I think I'm going to go ahead and extend the carrot patch all the way back to where the, the back of the radishes are here and move the radishes more up front um, because I've noticed that my carrots do a lot better here, more shaded. Um, in fact, I'll show you here in a moment when we get over to where the potatoes are and I planted the new bed of carrots. I have noticed that in the sun, none of the seeds came up but where it is shaded, all of the seeds came up. So it's very interesting and I'll show you that in just a moment. The beets, all of the leaves are now getting a lot better. Um, there's still a couple of crispiness on there, but that's from the prior incident. All of the new leaves that came out are just beautiful and no issues with them, no spots or any damage, right? And I'm, I'm starting to get beet heads on them, um, quite large beet heads, in fact, down in there. And then of course I have the younger beets that are coming on. They're not quite even close to that, but they will catch up pretty quickly. So just beautiful broccoli and beets and things. And these broccoli are now catching up. It's gonna be a while before they start having heads on them, but that's great because we'll have a little bit of a staggered harvest. And we do have the spinach all up in that row getting bigger so look forward to having some more spinach and the fennel is just looking absolutely fantastic we've got some nice big bulbs on the fennel and of course they're gonna get much bigger because I'm gonna be leaving them until the end of the season or until at least the heads are nice on those and uh, Swiss chard is really coming along now getting much taller beautiful colors on them and these are the extra row of white acorn squash and I think it's going to be the cocozel that's behind it and uh, looking fantastic nice big plants um, beginning to start some blooming so they're going to be setting some fruit soon or squash that is the sunflowers are now over my head of the bunches that I had planted, really beginning to fill out. Still waiting on cauliflower heads. I'm not sure why this cauliflower is taking so long. It is a self-blanching variety, so it does curl up in the center, up around the heads when the heads get started. Um, so I keep seeing that where it's curling up and it tells me that there's heads coming But I'm not seeing any heads yet. So I'm really really hoping that we do and now these were really really damaged With the hailstorm back on June 8th um, So I'm not real sure I'm not sure if they're gonna catch up enough to have nice big heads on them and Just a warning that this is gonna go into a part two because it is um, becoming a longer video and I apologize that it does become those that long, but the gardener's just so much stuff 
to go in and have a look at. Um, and I can't even get at this point because the garden is just so wild. Um, at this point, at the end of July, it just becomes a tangled jungle <laughs> in here because we have to do so so close planting. But anyway, I can't get back to that onion to get that out of there from where it's uh, fallen over. So anyway, we'll see you in part two.